morning, Ospreys. Today is Friday, December 2nd, 2022. It is day five for specials. The weather today will be cloudy and cool. The weather today will be cloudy and cool. For lunch today, for lunch today we, will have we will have pork rib sandwich, pork rib rib sandwich, sandwich or hamburger. Or hamburger. hamburger. Now it's time for the morning meeting. It's Friday, yay! Have a great weekend with your friends and family. Today we are going to start reading eight class pets plus one squirrel divided by one dog equals chaos with Miss Epson. I can't wait to listen to this book. Good morning, my Osprey friends. The time has come. We are going to start reading. Eight class pets plus one squirrel divided by one dog equals chaos. So what I want you to think about as we're reading this book is how the squirrel kind of thinks life is like as a squirrel. Because there's some funny parts in this book where he thinks people leave toys out for him or leave food out for him. And really what it is is that he's climbing in bird feeders and he's jumping on things in the backyard. Um, and his perception or what he thinks it's like and why kids go to school. Because the whole thing is, is that he's actually stuck in school and he goes and he visits eight class pets, right? And we get to learn a little bit about what they think their classroom's like. So we want you to think about this in connection to maybe you guys have class animals or animals in your room and imagine what they think your classroom's like what you're doing in your classroom in the eyes of maybe an animal it's actually really funny so we're going to start reading about the very first character which is twitch and he's that main character that the squirrel runs into the school so um this was actually written by vivian van veld and illustrated by steve bjorkman so he did the illustrations, and it says, to those teachers who are bold enough to have class pets in their room. So we've got a bunch of chapters, but we're just gonna focus on Twitch today, and he's the schoolyard squirrel. And I'm gonna show you a picture of Twitch so that you can see him. He's sitting on that tree right there. Being a squirrel is the best thing in the world. The next best thing in the world is living where I can live, which is near school. School is where humans send their young to learn things. I don't know why. Squirrel mothers teach their own young. These are things my squirrel mother taught me. How to climb, how to land when I jump or fall, how to find food, how to bury food, how to find food after I've buried it, how to look cute enough that humans will give me food so I don't have to find it, bury it, or find it again. How to get along with animals that don't eat squirrels. Not eating squirrels is something I admire those I meet. And how to get away from animals that do eat squirrels. These are all valuable lessons for a squirrel. I'm not sure why humans can't teach their own young. A few of the children are all right at climbing, but most aren't good at finding food, and they're hopeless at burying food. A squirrel mother teaches her young all they need to know by the end of summer, but human children spend five years in school. Hmm, I think it's more than five, don't you? Five years is long enough for a squirrel to grow very, very old, so it's a good thing that we're fast learners. And the humans aren't even truly finished in five years. I have heard them talking, and I know. Before they go to school, they go to kindergarten. And after they leave school, they will go someplace that is called middle school. And after that, they will go to high school. I haven't even, I haven't seen any of these other places. I have no idea what kindergarten is, but by their names, I'm guessing middle school is halfway up and high school must be at the very top of a tall tree. I suppose that's the only way humans will ever teach some of those young ones to climb. But school and the yards around it are a good place to live. It's fun to climb up the school building and to play on the playground equipment and when the children aren't, or when the children aren't using it. There are also trees for climbing, and some of them are nut trees, and some of them are fruit trees. That's two of my big interests all rolled into one, climbing and eating. And the people who live here love squirrels. 
They're always buying toys and exercise equipments for us, equipment for us, and they set these things up around the feeder to make sure we notice them. It's a mini playground with a snack bar in the middle. Some of the toys are for twirling on, and there are ropes to sh to shinny up and climb down, and balance beans to walk across. Sometimes, to make things a little extra challenging for our benefit, the ropes and poles are greased to make them slippery. Whee! I think it's to keep them out, but he thinks it's to play. It's very considerate of people to give us these jungle gyms so we don't become fat and lazy, like, for example, the groundhog. One day I was exploring a new bird feeder in the yard next door to school. It had a big slippery disc for sliding on and I was having so much fun. I lost track of time. Then I realized that the air had turned cool and shadows were growing long. Evening is a dangerous time of day because certain creatures who are not squirrels and who are not fat and lazy, groundhogs start thinking about dinner from, or breakfast. Some of them start thinking of a meal that involves a squirrel. I looked up and there was an owl and she was flying straight at me as though I was the main course on the snack bar. All I could do was start running zigzag patterns to try and confuse that owl. I didn't even notice the dog who was snapping, or I'm sorry, napping in his front yard. So there's the dog, there's the squirrel, and that's the hawk chasing him. Or I'm sorry, the um, owl. Now, it's easy to point a finger or paw in blame, but I say, if that dog didn't want me running over his nose, he shouldn't have been having it rest on the ground between his paws. But anyways, the next thing I knew, the dog was chasing me too. He ran so hard, he broke the leash that was supposed to hold him in his backyard. Luckily, one of the humans who works at the school had left the door propped open. And I noticed a big banner. Welcome! This is the same banner that tells the children school is open again after summer. Someone was obviously telling me that school was open for me to escape from the dog. Didn't I say there, that people here love squirrels? So for the first time in my life, I ran into school. That owl veered away and flew off in the evening, but the dog followed me in. So we're gonna stop there. And I want you to think about, when they start describing some of the places that they're looking, I want you to think about, you know, on the playground, what might be something that um, he was exploring a new bird feeder and then there was a big slippery disc for sliding on. I want you to think about some of the things that these different animals describe as we read through them because now they're in the school and it's really funny the way that all the different class pets describe those different things that are going on in your classroom because they're watching from their cage. So green eggs and hamster is the first grade hamster that we're gonna read about. And next week we're also gonna learn because they're short chapters about Miss Lucy Cottondale and she is the second grade rabbit. I hope you guys enjoyed this book. It's gonna be a good one. Have a great weekend. Do you wanna hear a joke? Sure. This joke is from Aaliyah in Mrs. Plot's class. What type, do, what type of pie do ghosts like? I don't know. Blueberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. Kids soar higher, super problem solvers, outstanding writers, accomplished readers, ready for success. Now let's say our success equation, hard work plus excency plus teamwork equals success. Have a great day!